Welcome and thank you for joining the webinar on revenue from non-program foods. My name is Mike Goverty and I am Principal Consultant with the Nutrition and Wellness Division. If you had the opportunity to attend the workshops our division put on in November, this is the section I presented. If you could not attend, this webinar will outline the module for you. The non-program foods section of the revenue is based strictly on the foods not part of your reimbursement. The Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act requires that FSAs do not incur cost over their revenues. Non-reimbursable foods are foods sold through vending machines, fundraisers, a la carte in the lunch and breakfast lines, and catered meals. Some districts cater to private schools, special education, and other facilities in or outlying their district. Referring back to the annual financial report discussed in the nonprofit school food service account webinar, this slide outlines the sections that are included in the reimbursable meals revenues and excluded. The excluded are the accounting portions we look at for non-program foods. How do we track the excluded? In the easiest format, we look at the point of sale used in the schools. Skyward and Loon are two software programs that easily provide the information that relates to the non-program foods. Now these are two software programs that can be a cost to the district. Now we cannot require a district to use any form of software for these purposes. There are software programs out there that are free to schools that have the same capability. We are still in the early stages of this program, so we understand we have not yet seen all of the software programs out there, but we can provide any and all assistance in searching for the programs that fit your district. The next slide is simply an example of what a standard point of sale can and should look like. If tracked accurately, all items outside the reimbursable meal can shift directly into reports that we can use for tracking the information we need. When learning the process is needed to assist districts in the non-program food tool provided by the USDA, we look to have outside alternatives that maybe we could determine compliance before entering the district office. Prior to entering in one district, we looked at the financials in the AFR and found the district's required revenue in its non-program foods to be 28%. When we met with the district, the FSA and the food service director had the USDA tool filled out to perfection with a revenue requirement of 27%. Once going through the materials provided by the food service director, we determined the only way to do non-program foods was with the information provided by the district themselves. This food service director, for example, provided came into our district when it was in the red year after year. I apologize now, I'll have to bounce back and forth between slides here. The slide that has been on is the tool done by the food service director. Please notice the red and blue numbers cost of non-program foods in red, and the revenue from the non-program foods in blue. These numbers filled into this slide will be seen in the next couple of slides. Coming into the district that had been losing money for some time, our food service director looked at her entire program and made changes. Her biggest change for the non-program food was to break down each and everything she serves aside from the reimbursable meal. In this slide, you can see on the top line of the spreadsheet, you can see what she has listed item, cost, retail sold for, quantity sold, overall cost per item and sales for the year, and her profit per item. As you can clearly see from this section of her spreadsheet, she did not make profit on every item. Not every item needs to be marked up to the same percentage. This slide shows what is most important for the tool down at the bottom. The number in red is the total cost of the non-program foods. The next number in blue is the revenue made for the non-program foods. So if you look at these numbers, you will see in the tool how the numbers were inputted. Once we take the cost of non-program foods in red away from the total cost, we are provided the minimum portion of revenue from non-program foods as a percentage. These two numbers determine this percentage. These two numbers do not change any other numbers or formulas in the system. Next is the revenue. Looking at the portion of revenue from non-program foods and total revenue, the minimum revenue required from the sale of non-program foods is computed. Based on the tool, our food service director knows that she's in full compliance with the revenue from non-program foods. The strongest point I can stress from this slide and the previous is that we do not look at every item. Our biggest concern is the cumulative numbers. The next two slides are an example of the tools that can be provided by ISBE to assist in pricing of non-program foods. I took the information from the Food Service Director's spreadsheet 
and inputted them in the tool produced by the resource management team in Michigan. Based on the 27% produced from the USDA non-program revenue tool for the district, I installed that into the tool. As well, I filled in the item, cost, and price charged from the spreadsheet. Based on the 27%, the approximate price in the center is determined for each item to determine what price should be charged to make adequate revenue. For example, please look at the cereal bar on the bottom left. The cost is 39 cents. For the desired cost percentage, the lunch program should charge $1.44 to make full revenue. This makes the 39 cents the entire 27% food cost of the $1.44. Between both slides, you can see you will not have to make up the markup every item to be a successful program. Food for thought. Markups do not have to be a standard. We hope that less healthy options will be marked up higher than healthy options. A la carte entrees options should be marked up higher than the reimbursable meal. We want each program to receive the reimbursement provided from the USDA, then make profit on the non-program foods. Again, we want districts to receive the federal reimbursement first and foremost. Simply stated, the USDA's only requirement is that you make more revenue than the cost you put out. The USDA non-program revenue tool has been a hard tool to grasp for us at ISBE. One major point that I stress when out on reviews is, while it has been difficult for us to grasp this process, we will not fault districts for being out of compliance. We look forward to working with districts to get a better grasp themselves on where they are with the foods they are serving. Any questions and concerns, please reach out to the resource management staff for assistance. Thank you for listening and viewing this webinar.